Here oh we go. boy. Okay, we're here. I like can't actually believe this is happening right now. I am interviewing the queen of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, Luann Nagara. And uh, Luann, welcome to Resilient by Design. I have like a million things I want to ask you. Um, but first of all, thank you so much for being on my podcast. Rebecca, I am so happy to be here. This is tons of fun for me. I heart hardly get a chance to be on the other side. So this really is fun. But more importantly, I'm looking forward to doing this with you. And I'm grateful. I've loved getting to know you better over the last year or so. And of course, you've been on my show and you've given tremendous value. So I know this is going to be a great conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I think I probably shared this on your podcast, but the very you are literally the first podcaster I ever listened to. Like uh -huh. in the, in my life, like podcasting, I mean, I feel like when you started, it wasn't mainstream. I mean, right, maybe right. it wasn't. I just, just, just like before, so just before, just before. Yeah. yeah. And I binged it and I binged it. And I was like, oh my God, light bulbs, like, <laughs> right? Like just these major <laughs> massive ahas. Cause at the time, you know, I was, I was a couple years into running my design business and like a lot of the listeners today was feeling frazzled, was feeling chaotic. I had no idea how to run a business, didn't go to business right. school. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to show up professionally. And you were like the goddess giving <laughs> all of the wisdom. So thank you. Cause without you, I don't think I'd be here today. So thank you, Luann. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, it's all the guests that come on and share their information and we're willing to peel back the curtain on their businesses. So it's really the whole community that has come together and shared and taught and uplifted and, you know, cheered and all the things. So we do it together. It's so true. It's so community. I mean, everyone knows how I feel about community. That is for me, the core of where it's all at is when we have these shared experiences, we share our experiences, we share our learnings. That's how we really learn more so even than sitting down and taking a course, right? It's like right. you have the live events. It's like when you bring people together and you see people sharing their wisdom, that's when you can really connect and, and really grow. So anyways, all that to say, I'm so thrilled that you're here. Um, I'm having a little bit of a fangirl moment. I'm not going to lie. You're on my <laughs> podcast. Like what? If you had told me in 2020, when I was like, I'm going to start a podcast that one day I would interview Luann Negar, I'd be like, Oh my goodness. I don't think so. Philly. It's amazing. Yeah, Philly. <laughs> <laughs> and when my kid's school called today because I had to go pick him, my son up because he had a tummy ache, I was like, I cannot miss my interview with Luann. <laughs> I even told the principal, I'm like, I have a really important interview at two o'clock. <laughs> I made it though. I'm here. All right. Without further ado, I just want to dive into all things business. But first, before we even get there, can you just let the audience members know, those who maybe aren't familiar with you or your podcast, like what's your deal? Where'd you come from um, to get to where you are today? You know, All the right. clips notes. Yeah, right. Okay. So the podcast is called A Well-Designed Business. And this podcast is literally the mission of the podcast is to help empower, teach, educate, support interior designers in making their businesses profitable and enjoyable to run. I also have a podcast called Window Treatments for Profit, where I do the same thing, but for window treatment professionals. And then also under my umbrella, we have a podcast called The Inner Edit that Christy Rocha is the host of. And she interviews digital content creators on all the aspects that they face in having to show up every day online in front of tens of thousands of people running a business under the microscope of everybody watching it. So these are the three things that we do under the umbrella of Luann Nigara Inc. It stems from um, four decades of running window works with my husband, Vince, and our cousin, Bill. So we opened that business um, in the, I guess, 81, 1981, that is. <laughs> Not that was the year I was born. <laughs> See, there you go. That. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and it's the um, trajectory of that business of opening up a brick and mortar store and being hungry and just grinding it out with guerrilla tactics on marketing and sales um, and developing the processes and the systems there and having the complete awareness that the systems are and the, 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 the focus on systems and the money is the backbone of the business, understanding that if sales are not there, 
you know, um, it's not going to happen either, but sales alone will not do it. And so the others have to be in place. And then um, through the experience of running window works from really 1982-83, I started cultivating designer trade business. I, I was I was the salesperson at Window Works for most of the years and now run the sales team. And um I cultivated the designer trade business. And through all the years of working with the designers, it was painfully clear that they struggled to run the business side of it. And that regardless of how talented they were, that that was not what translated to their success. I would work with designers that honestly in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, it was clear they were little above, you know, your garden variety store on the highway designer talent. It was, I mean, you, we all know an average talented designer. It's no smack. It just is a fact. We all have different skills. But the crazy thing is, is there were exact examples of designers with average talent that were literally bringing home 150, 200K to their families back in the 90s. And then I had designers that were literally, you know, AD1, hundred Kips Bay designers that were doing projects that your mind would be blown at the creativity, the beauty, um, the layering, the everything. And, and, you know, we're having conversations in elevators, how they can't make payroll year after oh year gosh. after year. That must have and blown so, your mind. Yeah. Yeah. It was you're just like, you're an just, architectural digest. Yeah. How do you just, not have the business figured out? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it just became, it can't be about your talent. And if you're relying on your talent, to create a profitable business, it's not going to work. It's just like literally yeah. is not going to work. Yeah. Talent alone is not going to grow, scale, or make you profitable. You don't even have to want to scale. No. It's just bringing home money to your family. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and I learned also too that a lot of designers, um, even when they're not profitable, will rationalize um, because they are producing beautiful work. And they are changing people's lives with the beautiful creations and the spaces that they provide for their consumers. And so there's a tremendous amount of satisfaction and there's a tremendous amount of um, validation in the talent and how incredible it is. And so privately, they would just ignore the fact that I'm working for a $50,000 salary and I could work for my friend down the block for 85. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a thousand percent. I remember in the first few years, I wouldn't even look at the bank account. If you'd asked me how much money did you make last year, I would have had no freaking clue. But right. did you see, I got a project on the cover of Style It Home magazine. Like exactly. that made up for the fact that I had exactly. no money. Exactly. It's, I mean, I saw it, I saw it over and over again and, and, and good for you for saying that out loud, Rebecca, because now you're in a position where you're helping and training and working with interior designers to increase their profitability and make their processes better. And it's a lot of courage for you to say that out loud. And I appreciate it because it is probably 85% of creative business owners that that's a true statement for. Yeah. And it, it is amazing how little <laughs> We talk about it. Even last night I was out for dinner with some of my designer friends here in Toronto and the conversation always circles back to, did you see the project that that person did? Oh, yeah. wow. Look at this project because we're creatives, right? Mm -hmm. and, and meanwhile, I'm sitting there. I'm like, can we talk about like, how's everyone doing financially? What's your cash mm -hmm. flow like, right? Like <laughs> right. I've got a client that I'm like, that's not paying me. And I have to get like, I, I'm eager and anxious for that. Those open vulnerable conversations because mm. that makes you feel like you're not alone. And I think that's what you've really done with your podcast, Luann, is you realize all these designers are struggling with the same thing, but they're not talking to each other about it. And there's nobody there to help them because their accountant and bookkeepers aren't really, that's not their job to school them and teach them. And right. you're not going to inspire someone by telling them, you need to look at your P&L, what's your profit margin, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And they can, you know, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And even if the best accountant or bookkeeper is, you know, counseling you to pay attention, if you, you're you not going to, you're not going to, you know, and it's fear. It's fear. It's fear of not understanding the accounting and the the profit margins and, and it's fear of not understanding the back end of the business. And so we just concentrate on the front end that we're good at and we just keep thinking it'll click, it'll click, it'll mm. click, but it's not going to. It's just not going to. It's impossible.
This is your tough love, everyone who's listening. <laughs> if you've just been listening and not acting, today's the day you take yeah. action. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love it. Because what happens is, is, and I, I, I want to be clear, you can stay in business for 10, 15, 20 years, but there's difference between creating a job for yourself that you actually have all the pressure of a business and creating wealth. And what I call it when I do my live presentations, I call it money, money laundering. You know, you're bringing the money in, you're bringing <laughs> it in, that. you're doing it. You sold a $300,000 project, you brought it in, but at the end of the year, there's 20 bucks left because you brought it all in and you paid it all out. Nothing stayed in the middle and there's no glory in that, but that's how you actually, because some people in there are like, when I say it is impossible to be successful if you don't pay attention to the back end. And they're like, well, you know, I've been in business 25 years. I'm like, great. That's awesome. And what did you pay yourself last year? You know? And then yeah. I say, and what your gross revenues? I'm like, well, here's what you should have paid yourself. If your gross revenues are that number, this is what you should have paid yourself. I said, and what do you have in the bank? And what have you invested in? Like, mm -hmm. have you created wealth? Or have you done a million and a half or $2 million worth of projects that have come in on top line revenue for 20 years and you have literally earned 50K and your car payment out of it every year? Like, no, that is not what this is supposed to look like. And it doesn't have to look like that. That's the thing. Yeah. And you know what, Leanne, it's so interesting. I'm I'm actually, I'm headed down to Nashville next week to meet with my business coach in person for the first time because life is oh, on fun. Zoom now. And mm -hmm. she's asked me to print off the last five years of income statements, right? And my balance mm -hmm. sheet. So I've gone through this exercise of like, okay, I'm putting it into a spreadsheet. And I'm, I asked like my office manager, can you print all these for me? And he's printing them and bringing them to me. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> like, even me, <laughs> I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm looking back like more historically, like look at 2017, look at 2018, yes. look at 2019. Yes. And there was a couple of things that really popped out at me. And one of them that now hearing you talk has got me wanting to share is that from one year, I think it was 2018 to 2019, my gross revenue doubled nice. and my, but my, my, I think, okay, now I'm, I'm, I might misquote it, but my profit margin more than doubled. Oh. And I were, and I was, I'm like, what? This is so interesting. Why? You should have had a little a pot project? of money there that year. <laughs> I did. That, going into the pandemic, I did. And I was very grateful for that. But mm. I realized that was the year I started keeping all my commissions and discounts. That was the year that I stopped sharing all my trade discounts because I used to split them 50 50 with clients. Oh my God. Holy heck. Don't what even a get difference. me started. I know we've talked started. about this before on your podcast, but I just, I'm like, the numbers don't lie. Right. Right. And it's your hard earned money. It's due to you. It's due to you. Uh, you know, I, you know me, I say it on the show all the time. We go in to, you know, dinner at the Capitol Grill or Ruth Chris or Morton's or whatever it is. And they don't sit there and say, hey, this filet mignon cost us 25 cents. So we're, you know, we're going to sell it to you for 50 cents. It's like, no, that filet mignon is going to cost you $45. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you okay. happily pay it because of the package that it's in. You can yeah. go to the grocery store and buy your own filet mignon and cook it and season it and all the things and serve it and clean it up and scrape the pans. Or you can choose as a grown up to engage in a luxury service and knowingly go into the transaction knowing that you're not paying wholesale for that dinner, period. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I actually interviewed one of my designers room members. She's a new member. She took my course uh, this past fall and her name is Amanda. She's a uh, New England home and interiors, super savvy woman who's been in business. Sorry. She's been in corporate for 30 years in the banking world and has now just opened her design firm. And we had this conversation and she's like, it baffles her mind that people are passing on these discounts. Cause she was saying like in the banking world, like th there's a capital, I don't know, I'm going to misspeak, but she was basically saying that that's not how capital markets work. No. So it's why not. are people doing that? And I'm like, oh, and I'm hearing, I mean, I preach about it all the time, but it's just little old Rebecca over here preaching and Luann too, but she had like concrete facts from like the yeah. banking world. I'm like, yeah, what she said. Yes. That's it. That's it. <laughs> well, the thing is the trade discounts were, were set up in order to encourage you as a purchaser in the space to come back to that store. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. 
I'm selling to Mrs. Smith. I'm Bob's furniture. I'm selling to Mrs. Smith. But if you come to me 30 times in a year, you know, that's worth more to me than 30 Mrs. Smiths. And so, because I don't have to pay for you over again. I don't have to market to you over again. So, encur so encourage you to do, you're, I'm going to let you create a store within my store. You're a retail, you, as a designer, yeah. you are a retailer of goods. You are a retailer yeah. of your services and of your goods. And why somehow the design industry thought that even, you know, Baskin Robbins for crying out loud gets a markup on ice cream, but you don't make a markup. It's mind boggling to I me. Know. I know. It's so crazy. Um, so this just gets me thinking about like, you obviously are very clearly such a baller when it comes to business. Like you are just, <laughs> no, you really are. I don't know why I use that term, but you just, it's amazing. It comes naturally to you. It has not come naturally to me. And so I've learned a lot of, and I've had to like trial and error, a lot of these things. And what I remember you once talking about, maybe you've talked about many times, I don't remember where it was, was probably on your podcast, but about this idea of when you wanted to launch your podcast, and I think your husband uh, was saying, you know, why? I mean, I'll let you fill in the story, but I, what I remember from the conversation is you had a business plan. Yeah. You weren't just like, I'm just going to create a podcast because I want to talk to people. Like right. Re Rebecca Hay over here is like, I just want to <laughs> talk to designers and it's going to be so fun. And and now here I am like year three. I'm like, oh man, I got to, we need to like cover our costs. <laughs> so I, you don't give in yourself of enough credit. I'm sure you're doing a much better job We're internally than you're saying. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're yeah. working at it. But you really had strategically sort of a plan and you, and you treated it like a business when you were talking about your books. And I mean, you can share that story, but am I, am I right in that assumption or in that memory? Yes. You're 100% right. Yeah. No, I mean, when it came time for, you know, and before, and don't let me forget to answer it, but I just want to address something that you said, like, oh, you're a baller and it, this comes easy to you and naturally to you. It didn't come need, easier naturally to you. Understand you, we just, we just established, I started my business the year you were born. Okay. That's a very fair like, point. <laughs> there's a few years some life here, right? There. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, I didn't pop out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the thing is, just like you, Rebecca, at your stage now, what you know and you own, you will passionately go to the designers that you coach and say, I know this to be true. It's just that I have you know, 20, whatever more years, 30 more years of those things that I've stacked up. So I'm willing to be more in your face about more topics. That's all it is. Okay. okay. You know, I like that. I didn't That's very pop out brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little, but you know, that actually is a good reminder for all of us listening yeah. too, because we compare ourselves to people, uh, especially designers. We're all guilty of that, especially on the gram of comparing ourselves to someone who's further along in their journey, whether it's that they've been in business for a longer period of time, or they've really niche down or whatever it is they've done. And so it's a good reminder. Thank you to, thank you, Luann, that we yeah, can't you always have ourselves. to take stock of the things that you're doing right. Yeah. Never forget. I don't care if you're in business three months, there's something you did in the first three months that you said, you know, that was a good decision on my part, stack it up. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you're four and a half, four, four plus and a half decades into it, there's just a bigger stack. That's all. <laughs> there's just yeah. bigger. And there's a lot that. more failures that you learn from. And so you come back stronger in it. And, um, you know, that's all I want to make sure we, we cover now as as far as the podcast is, is concerned, yes, there's no question that um, I think no matter what it is, it's not that when you start a podcast, you have to or you should or I have a belief that it should be started as a business. What it is, is it's one step before that. Why are you doing the thing that you're doing? So for me, when I said I wanted to do a podcast, it was getting clarity on, is this something that I want to do as a hobby? Do I just want to do this? Do I just want the opportunity to speak to people about business and all of this stuff? And it was like, no, I have hobbies. I, I, I have things in my life that I do that are fun. And I knew that I wanted it to be the business. I called it the retirement business because I can do it from anywhere. You know, I was, like I said, in window works and I was the sale, one of the salespeople at that point, we had grown a larger team. team, but I was responsible for half of the gross sales of window works at that point. And it was very clear that our home did not make money 
unless Vin and I knocked on a door and said, hi, I'm here from Window Works for our appointment. And we were just getting to the point in life where it's like, is this how we're going to do this for the next 20 years? Like we actually have to schlep the books and then go in and do this. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot you picture know? you schlepping fabric books or Oh my God, I schlepped them for 40 years. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so, and it just also, the, the challenge was gone. Quite frankly, I was over it. Um, I enjoy my position at Window Works now as cool quote unquote, co-chairman of the board, where we advise um, the team, the new ownership team. We sold the business to my son-in-law and our daughter. And then there's other minority partners. Um, but this was this was intended to be a business. And in order for it to be a business, it had to have a strategic plan. It had to have how was it going to monetize? What were those revenue streams going to look like? And what was it going to cost? What were the operational expenses? And you know, the operational expenses from the first year are insanely different now as I go into year eight. You know, the first year I did three quarters of the tasks myself, nights, weekends, two o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. Now I have 13 people on my team to run this podcast. Wow. You know, now every yeah. bit of it is, you know, like, okay, who does that? Not me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just get to show like, up and talk, which yeah, is what like, you're you the know? best at anyways, right? Well, this is the thing. I have two roles. I'm the visionary. And I'm the interviewer. This is it. It's like everything gets filtered through. Like I dump my ideas every darn day, drive them all out of their minds, you know, and ask them two days later, are have we executed yet? And they're like, wait, that was for real? I'm like, yeah, that was Monday. It's Wednesday. What happened? You come know? on, people, come on. <laughs> you know, or they're looking at me going, yeah, you keep saying that one. We don't think that idea is a good idea. All right. Prove me wrong. Why? You know? So, um, but yeah, it had to be because it was, it, 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 it didn't have to be, it had to be for me. I had hobbies. This was never a hobby. It was a, was supposed to be the retirement business period. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So do you find that you've slowed down? Like, is your time less committed now than before, or is it just different? Um, I, I definitely spent the last year working very few Saturdays and Sundays. And it's very rare. Like I will, I've had many more Saturdays and Sundays in the last year than in the last eight years, seven years, I should say, where I didn't work at all. Didn't not one minute, not one second. And the ones that I did work, I, I characterize them as work I choose to do. It's not deadline driven. It's, there's no, you know, there's no distractions. There's no people, there's no meetings, there's no interviews. So it's like, what would happen if I did this? How would I plan that out? What's the, how, what would be the mm -hmm. um, expenses mm -hmm. for that? What would be the possible revenue from that? And it's just the dreaming of what's next. And yeah. so that's a big difference, but that is also, I'm trading money for time. Uh, you know, I've 13 people on the payroll now. Yep. So yep. I'm just trading it out. It's like, you know, we say it's all time or money. You can, yeah. it's like coaching you, you know, look, every single person that listens to your podcast, probably 95% of them will ultimately create a fairly successful business. Even if God forbid it's a money laundering business and they just pay the bills and Rob Peter to pay Paul <laughs> and they make money. Right. But the difference is if they invest their time and money with you, then they will cut the time that it takes them to be profitable. And that's mm -hmm. all that is. You know, we all, we can grind it out and figure it out, or we can pay somebody who's a step ahead of us and and buy the information and the expertise to help us cut through. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I've always, I've always subscribed to that. I mean, I started hiring people in my business early on. I don't know if it was just because I'm like, I don't want to have to do these tasks. I 100%. always thought, I always thought really big, I suppose. I'm like, I'm going to have a $500 million business, like with no concept exactly. of how I was going to even get there. I've got my <laughs> team, we got a whiteboard. We're like, they're like, yeah, okay, Rebecca, like you're freaking loopy. I mean, we haven't hit 500 million yet. I'll let you know. That's um, it. But, <laughs> you can't but, get there if you don't plan it though. That's you see? right. See, you can't there you get go. there if you don't even dream it. If you don't even allow yourself to dream it, how could you even possibly make yeah. a plan to achieve it? So yeah. I, you know what? High five to you. Thank you, Luann. One day we'll look back on this conversation and I'll say, 
Luann dressed in green with her green mic, gave me the green light <laughs> <laughs> to go after my dreams. And I did it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Amazing. <laughs> but you're right. Like about dreaming. It's interesting. One of the things I love to do inside my courses is I'm a little woo woo sometimes. I, I do think about tap. I'm learning a lot more about tapping into my intuition. And, mm. um, but I've always been like one of my key strengths is I'm a futuristic. So I, I see the future before it comes. But I, yeah. I do have, I can see things, which is probably why I'm good at design because I can envision yeah. the finished space, right? But uh, when it comes to business, I think there's so much power in crafting a vision, having a vision board, um, doing that exercise to sort of let your subconscious take over. Like, where do I really, if I could do it without judgment, where would I see myself in 10 years? And 100%. I think it's so powerful. Have you had any experience doing anything like a little bit more woo woo that way? Like what? I don't know that I've ever heard you talk about it, um, but I'm always curious when I speak to someone who's a baller in business, um, do you tap into that side of you, that intuitive side? Oh my side? God. I'm woo woo from practically the womb. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Obviously oh, I was yeah. just picking up on the other things. <laughs> oh yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, I have talked about it on the podcast often. My mother and my aunt were woo woo back in the sixties. Okay. And by the time I was 10 years old, um, I had myself and my brother and our four cousins had completed the Silva. It was used to be called the Silva mind control method. And it's because it was the seventies, but now because that sounds a little whacked, it's just called the Silva method. <laughs> I like the original title. Oh my God. It's like when you pick up one of those old books and you start reading it to your right. kid. Oh, this is not appropriate. <laughs> exactly. Who knows this book from 1923? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Boys, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So um, we, you know, I'm 10 and we complete the Silva method, um, raised on it, ingrained in my brain. My aunt, when I'm 10 years old, starts handing me Napoleon Hill, Ogmandino, Wayne Dyer, Leo Biscaglia. I mean, like literally Dale Carnegie. This is, is like, and I was like the person who like read insatiably. And so I'm like, okay, Nancy Drew and, you know, Napoleon Hill, Nancy Drew, <laughs> Dale Carnegie, you know what I mean? And it was like, and I just, um, and then what happens is when it gets on your brain cells early, that visualization is a thing and that it's important and that it should be part of what you do and how you function to it, to expand your brain, your mind, your heart, your soul to all the possibilities. When you're exposed to that young, it becomes second nature. It's just like, I don't have like, one time I was talking about on the show and somebody was talking about um, getting into a meditative state. And I'm at the point like it's it, like I was taught to meditate at 10 years old and we practiced it regularly. Like we would my aunt would come over and all of the kids, my mom, my dad, everybody would lay on the floor all over the living room and dining room. And my aunt would lead us in guided meditations. Wow. OK. And then she taught us as children to go to, so you do a uh, three to one meditation to get to the, a deeper level of mind. And then she taught us go 10 to one to a deeper level of mind. And she did this whole visualization, 10, and it's still clear, crystal clear, because I do it on a regular is, and she said for children, she adapted it. And she was like, so when you get down and I say one, the doors are going to open and you're going to be in a laboratory. And anything and everything is possible in this laboratory. And you have guides in this laboratory. They can be whoever you want. And like my, wh whoever was the pro quarterback at the time, because my boy cousins, <laughs> so like say, you know, Bill Smith, you know what I mean? If you want Bill Smith to be your, your guide, Bill Smith could be your guide. Right. And, <clears throat> and the thing is, when you get older, you recognize all she do was doing was teaching us to cue into our higher selves. Our guides are us. It's your mm -hmm. highest, clearest, most pure voice that leads you. And she was, and she would say in the lab, you could do anything in the laboratory. If you want to, you know, hit every single foul shot in your laboratory, go practice foul shots, see your form. Think about that. 
Like, think about now. We know scientifically now that if an athlete practices his shot or her shot mentally, visually, they are way more statistically likely to be successful. She taught us in 1972 to practice those things in our mind's eye. Okay. And she would say, if you have a test coming up, go down and tell yourself all the answers come easily to me. I understand every every, content that my teacher teaches me. I absorb it easily. Like this is how we were taught. Everything flows to me. It flows in and it flows out. Like this is how we were raised. And then I come into my teen years and early 20s and who comes on the on the scene but tony robbins i mean yeah you know yeah you know, he's like maybe three five years older than me and i'm like yeah. oh my god and we're like buying the albums and the eight tracks the and tapes. then the cds yeah. you know what I mean? like, <laughs> stick the cassette in the car exactly so so yeah i'm woo woo through and through believe me (laughs) oh my god okay so much of that i absolutely love i grew up with a very woo woo mother um Uh i wasn't the reader i was more of the skeptic it's so interesting how things obviously can have an effect like your experience was so positive and you at least now reflect on it very positively. Whereas the time for me, I was like rolling my eyes. Okay, here we go. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure, mom. What does Tony Robbins say? What does, um, um, I can't think of all the names of the people right yeah, now. Yeah, yes, yes. Right? And now I'm now I'm catching myself as an adult and now with children of my own, that's like, I'm just, I am like a sponge for personal development yeah. and all of the yeah. woo-woo. And it's so funny. Yeah. And I feel oh, my poor mom, I gave her such a hard time. But hearing you say that is reminding me that I need to teach my children. Like my kids are six and nine. This is yes, the time. this is the time. I love Bring them down. Learn to meditate and learn to just think and explore. And you know, like the biggest thing that I remember was the concept of creating this laboratory in our mind as a place that we. It's like the vision board of your life. Anything mm. is possible here. What do you want? How do, and of course, when you're little, like she would relate it to school successes and sports successes and stuff. But you learn the skill and you learn the practice of it. And now you apply it to the rest of all the big things that matter, not just making the foul shots at the game. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so how would you say you've taken that and you've applied it to business? Like what role do you see intuition playing in for inside business? Oh, it's critical. I mean, it's just critical. It's the thing is, you know, it's funny because I, re, I, my, my youngest daughter, like my, 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 my four kids, the three are stepchildren though. Right. So my daughter, um, our daughter together, um, I remember there was a time it's, it's crazy because I always hesitate if I should tell the story or not, cause it's graphic. Okay. So I'll do the, the high points of it. And you let me know if you want details, okay. <clears throat> but <clears throat> she's eighth grade. She's playing in a soccer game. I'm sitting on the bench, um, you know, with our little, um, town, you know, um, school and <clears throat> there are parents on the bench and I'm sitting there watching the game. And there's two women about three seats um, behind me, excuse me, on the bench. And they are talking to each other. They are thinking they're being quiet about it, but they're not. And the one woman says to the other woman, did you hear about, you know, let's call them Billy and Sally on Saturday night. Now, I recognize these two names as also being eighth graders in my daughter's school. And this is September of eighth grade year. And the other one goes, I know, I heard that Sally gave Billy a you mm. know what, okay? Eighth, great. I'm I'm stunned. I am stunned. And I'm, I'm stunned on multiple levels. I'm stunned on the level, like first and foremost, that these two women are talking about it and they have no idea truthfully if it's true. And now mm. they're whispering, on the bench. And I'm just like, these are children. Like, I'm sorry, you want to get on the phone and you want to talk smack. I don't agree with it, but you do it in your privacy, not where you think you're being quiet. Number two, my brain goes to, I'm so sorry at eighth grade, this is happening. Like eighth grade. Think about that. That's three years for you. Like, 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 no. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not going to happen to me. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like your child is nine in in four years, 13 years old. They're in eighth grade. Stop. Okay. And So my brain goes to, okay, 
I thought I had to like, to, like I don't know, 10th or 11th grade before I had to have this conversation. And now I got to look at my little baby in eighth grade. I got to have this conversation, right? And so I end up, the whole story is this big, long thing, but I end up having a conversation with her. And the crux of the conversation that I said to her was, you have an inside voice. You have an inside voice. You have the goddess voice in you. And that goddess voice always knows best. And I said, there will be a day when you are much older that you will likely engage in this activity. But there is a difference between doing it because you think you should in order to fill in the blank, make some somebody like you, make somebody not break up with you. I don't care. Make some, I don't care. And when you do it because you love somebody and you're choosing to do it, try having that conversation with 13 year old. It is brutal. Okay. But I said to her, whether you are talking about looking at somebody's test and trying to take an answer or something as big in life as respecting your body, and your person. I don't care if it's a big thing or a little thing. I promise you in each moment, your goddess voice is going, I don't think you should do it. I don't think you should do it. I don't think you should do it. And sometimes your goddess voice will say, I don't think you should have a cookie because mom said no cookies before dinner. And you might ignore that goddess voice, but don't tell me you're going to take that cookie and you're not going to hear the voice that says, I'm not supposed to have this cookie. I said, but you need to understand that it's the same voice for the biggest events in your life. And if you honor that voice, you will not make mistakes that you will regret. You can choose to ignore it, but understand there will probably be consequences for that choice because your core soul will not have wanted to do it. And so it's the same in business. You you get it. It's like you get a, you know, somebody a lot of times I'll have designers that I'm coaching with and the chairman of the board and different things. And they'll be like, you know, this client wants me to give their money back and I don't think I should and blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, tell me the God's honest truth. Like, I know you don't want to write a check for $30,000 right now. I know that's going to drain your checkbook. I get it. But you tell me the truth. Is it the right thing to do based on the circumstances or is it not? Because if it's not, you and I are going to figure out a way to make it clear to this client that they're not entitled to this. But if it's the right thing to do, then it's very important to you that you do the right thing. I promise you, you do not want to be the business owner that does not have integrity. Mm -hmm. And you have to go to sleep at night. So you might figure out a way to ignore that person, not make them whole, not do whatever. But you're never going to forget it. And now you become the person who cuts corners that doesn't do the right thing. And that is not worth 30 K. And I don't care if it does empty your checkbook. Yeah. Whoa. Tough love. I love that. Um, Luann, <laughs> I get on a roll. I'm sorry. No, I love it. I freaking love it. Um, I love that story. I love that story. I love your response to that story. Um, I feel like it's like a little bit of that. Do you follow you, your kids are grown up, but Dr. Becky good inside. <laughs> oh, my daughter like, listens to her. Yeah, I, I, I've heard of her through her. My youngest now is going to be 35 in two weeks. I mean, oh, wow. you yeah. know. Yeah. So she yeah. would know. Yeah. Anyways, as I feel like you're channeling that, that That's parenting wisdom. And I actually feel like also maybe you could do some, a set of meditation for children. Just, just an idea. Mm -hmm. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> I would buy it <laughs> for my kids. Um, or on the Calm app, you can be one of those people. Right. Right. But um, I don't know how no, calm I could be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think if you put some, if you put some effort, you can. Ooh, but I know really like that, that story of your daughter, it really brings it back to like those childhood moments of whether or not we remember times in our childhood or upbringing where we did not trust that mm. inner voice. I mean, when I heard you tell that story, I thought of at least two, three times immediately, like in my early twenties, when I did something in my, and I was too afraid to speak yes. up. Yes. I was too afraid to call attention to something because I wanted to be liked. I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, yep. like all the people pleasing things. And, yes. and I, I think if you can't get a, if you can't nip it in the bud at a young age, it can just 
it gets out of control. And, and so many women can, I mean, not that you can't rein it in. I feel like I'm now finally in my forties reining it in and paying attention. I've spent the better part of last year working with a mindset coach on like, what even is that voice? What is that intuition? Mm. How do I know what's my intuition and what's, you know, the pros and cons on a piece of paper? Right. making decisions, especially in business, sometimes in personal life, it can be a quick, yeah, no, I don't feel like doing that thing. But in business, sometimes I think, and I don't know, designers listening can probably relate to this. There's so many other people who know so much better than me. So why don't I just listen to what they say? And well, mm. this person said that. And so they don't think I should do this. I'm going to like, I'm writing, making these mental lists, right? These are the pros of doing this, making this business decision. This is the pros of doing that business decision uh, to the point where then you don't even know what your intuition is saying, because it's yeah. so clouded by all the outside advice and opinions. And I just, at the time that this is airing, I will have just announced a big change in my business, which is. I did a lot of soul searching because I'm trying to figure out like, what is it that like with you, Luann, I'm like, what, what am I doing and why, what am I good at? And where am I having the biggest impact? Because I got a Mm. lot of things. I got a lot of pokers in the fire, if you will, but like the free Facebook group, I've got the community, I've got the, the course, I've got the other little course. I got the podcast, like I've got the design business still. Like there's so many things and it's too much and it's not, it's not the future for me. And so for me, and I just, this story is just bringing up all this right now is that understanding what is my inner voice telling me mm-hmm. and regardless of what people on the outside are saying. And so I made a really hard decision to close my big free Facebook group that I've had for four years wow. with over a thousand people um, so that I could pave the way to serve designers inside designers room I, it was a back end membership. It was on the back of my course. I've brought it to the front end, like to the outside wow. world. This might not seem like a big deal, but for me, it was a really hard decision. Oh to no, make. that's significant. Yeah, yeah. I know. Thousand it, people closing a group. That's significant. Right. And so, I mean, at the time of this airing, <clears throat> I, who knows? I, I've, at the time of this recording, it's just been announced. So there's a lot that can yeah. happen between now and then, but yeah. I think it's going to be well, well received because I'm practicing what I preach right? Mm -hmm. I'm practicing, Mm -hmm. you need to trust what is going to be the right fit. And I always talk about, you know, who's your client? What is your strength? And where does that overlap? Because that's your sweet spot, right? That's where you can assist people. And so, but, uh, but listening to what my inner voice was telling me, it took some time. Like, I don't know if you have you found that. Um, It sounds like you're pretty skilled at listening to that inner voice now. But does it take sometimes time for you to, to really kind of sort through the noise to figure out, no, no, no. What is my path? Like, that's nice that they have this opinion. It's nice that that person thinks it's a bad idea. Great that they think it's a great idea, but I can't give their opinions as much weight as my own. Do you ever experience that? Because that's been a big process for me this year. Yes. I would say there's, there's multiple things that come to my mind in all of the things that you are saying. And I want to just acknowledge and give you credit for doing this work and to searching for what is the why and really trying to parse through what what serves you and your community that you work with now and the designers you serve in the best way to make the best impact. So good on you for doing the exploration. Um, I would tell you there's a couple of things there. Number one, go back to the fact that I did start meditating at 10 years old. And it is the type of thing where I don't need to be in a quiet room. I don't need to, I can do it driving down the road now. It's just a Zen moment. It's just like, take a breath, clear the head. What are we doing here? Okay. But it is like anything else. If you are experiencing difficulty in hearing your true inside voice, then it's no different than if you're experiencing difficulty in drafting. You can't just say, well, one day next year, I'll probably be good at it. You've got to practice it. You've got to cultivate the quiet to listen to the inner voice and to allow it to bubble up. And so if you have a true desire, it doesn't have to be a half hour. It can be five minutes a day. I sit in a chair, I have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of lemon water, and I just allow my thoughts to enter. Okay. And I see what happens. Now, Beyond that, I will tell you, there is a difference between, there's not a difference. There is a distinction and a clarity between the inner voice that guides you in your personal interactions. Like when you said in your 20s, you can go back and think the things that you did in order to be liked or not to be disliked or whatever. Those... 
I think we, I, I don't think any of us really needs a whole lot of practice to hear that voice. I, I, I mean, especially as women, we have all been in a situation where whether it's a work situation, it's a girlfriend situation, it's a boyfriend situation, it's a mother, father, sister, brother situation where we are accommodating somebody else's agenda or desires and, and ignoring our own in order to fill in the blank, be liked, be loved, be agreeable, be quiet, be whatever. Okay. And I, I think we know when it's happening. And so <clears throat> to tap into, am I, and see, the thing is, I'm not going to say I'm going to disrespect my mother over my inside voice. It's my mother. Okay. <laughs> but then it's also a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know what, Luann, this isn't feeling really great. However, this is serving your mom and your relationship with your mom right now or your daughter or your husband and you can choose to look at it a different way process it a different way ask for a clarification ask for a condition on this so that it feels right okay so it's not a all I'm saying is it's not a blanket get out of jail card or get in jail card right there's some thinking and nuance and then from the business standpoint what I would say is it's very important to surround yourself with advisors trusted advisors. So in my first book, I wrote about assembling your dream team. You know, it's like, because most of us as entrepreneurs are visionary. You spoke about how you have lots of ideas and your vision board and all the things. And, you know, a great idea isn't necessarily an inside voice moment. Like, let's be real. It's sometimes it's just a great idea. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's an inspired idea and it is an inside voice moment and you got to, you know, put the pedal to the metal and do it. But that doesn't mean when it comes to business that it doesn't get vetted. You see, I don't have to vet if the real, the personal situation I'm in feels like my personal boundaries are being abused. I don't have to vet that. That's bull crap. Get out of my yeah. boundaries, back up, okay? But a great idea in business like I can have 10 minutes thinking I just like I'm a genius. This is like a most amazing. And then it's like, OK, let's get all the advisors here. Let's yeah. get my people who listen to my stuff. And then they either poke holes in it and I can still justify or explain or mitigate or they like yes and or no. But um, so having a community of trusted like I've got my first level circle people around me, second level circle people, third level circle people around, and they come in all shapes and forms. They come from in and outside the industry, in and outside your family. But you know the people whose opinion you know has that right mix of, I have your best interest at heart and I can separate my desires and goals from the question or the problem that you have at hand. You know, this is why I developed the chairman of the board program because <clears throat> so often our partner is one of our most trusted advisors, right? Like who's, yeah. who's all in on our partner than us. We want they, if the business is successful, then that, then their life is easier, whatever partnership it is. Right. And whether it's a business partner or a life partner, but I was finding so often with interior designers, um, like I had this one situation where a designer had such a great clarity on an investment that was a $35,000 investment for her to make for her business. And she calls me up and she's like, I just got to run this by you. Like, you know, am I crazy? Because she was in business maybe a year and it was a big deal to make this investment. And she runs it all by me and I'm asking her all the different questions. I'm like, this seems like a home run. Like, what's the problem? And she said, you know, it's just a, it's a lot of money to spend. You know what I'm saying? I have it, but it's a lot of money to spend. I've never made a purchase of this level before. And she said, and you know, what's funny is I asked my husband about it. And when I explained to him all of the things like I did to you, he said, my gosh, I think it's a, you know, I think it's a great idea. You should do it. And she said, okay, so I'm going to write the check. It's like, oh, how much is it? And she said, 35,000. And he said, wait a minute, you have $35,000 in your business checking account that you can like divert to that. And she was like, well, yeah. And he goes, well, if you've got that kind of money, you should be making an investment in our kids' college fund. And I'm like, er, right there. You see? Yeah. Because the 35000 she was going to invest probably returned her 150000 the next year. But see, when somebody's too close and aren't objective 
and their own needs start to seep in to that, you know, a quote unquote, like decision making process. And that's why, you know, you do need your dream team yeah. around you. Yeah. And I think what I'm hearing, uh, which is, is very sage advice is, you know, be careful who you're getting advice from, right? The idea is like surround yourself with mentors, people who know what it is that you do, who understand your business. You know, don't ask your friend who, who work, who's a teacher who teaches grade one, if you should make a decision in your business, like what did they know? about your and business see, and yet don't give it the same weight as somebody else's opinion. And this is where the inside voice is very important because you can have two or three, like, look, you're right. It's unlikely that a first grade teacher is going to be able to help you weather and me measure out big risks in your business because they've never experienced it. But I'm going to tell you what, you you cannot discount that 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 first grade teacher might be rep, rep, representative of your target client and she might be able to one to give you great advice on the way your stupid instagram feed looks you know what i'm saying so my point is though that your inside voice is a very good guide to who your advisors are mm. like you sit quietly am i getting good advice like i love my husband he is one of the most brilliant businessmen i've met and i will tell you 80% of what I know, I know from being in business side by side with him, hands down. But there are certain things I'm like, nope, you're not the one I'm asking this to. Nope, not you. I'll ask him these five things. But my inside voice knows where I got to go to Nicole Heimer or yeah. I've got to go to my cousin Eileen Hahn or I've got to go to Amber de la Garza. Like, you know, or I got to go to Gustavo at, Goose, at, at Duke Renders. Like there are, you know, and there's things that I go to Nagara on. Let's do this. But that's where yeah. your inside voice guides you, right? Just like there's certain people who you ask if this is the right outfit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Not everyone. Exactly. You don't want certain people's opinions about your outfit because they have no idea about fashion. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. Every time I put an outfit together, I come down, I say to Vinny, he's like, you look great, Nat. I'm like, great, but I want to know if it's it's this belt or that belt. <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. like, I don't think it should be a belt at all. I'm like, forget it. And then I send <laughs> yeah. a picture to my two daughters and they're both like that belt. I'm like, okay, it's that belt. <laughs> exactly. But that is the perfect example. Oh my yeah. gosh, such wise words. Yeah, that is something too, I think by by finding the mentors. And I think sometimes as when we're starting out and, and running our, our creative businesses, we don't really even know where to find those mentors. And that's why- I think it's amazing. We have these podcasts like yours, um, these communities, these courses, like find mentors there. It was, I did an interview this morning um, with two of my longtime OG uh, POP students, like Power Process, my course, and um, the one girl, Ariella, she's so sweet. She literally took my first course that ever came out joined the membership the first time it ever came out. And she's been in there oh. ever since. And she said, you know, I was at a local, there's like a local designer um, get together in her city in Montreal. And she said, you know, uh, Rebecca, I hope it's okay. But I just, I tell everyone you're my mentor. Oh. And I'm like, I am. And just That's the same right. way that like Luann, you've been my mentor, even though mm -hmm. I haven't known you in person for all these years. Like there's right. absolutely an opportunity to find mentors who you respect, who give you good advice, who are helping to make your life better, even if they're not sitting down with you face to face. Right. And I think that's what's right. so magical about what you and I get to do, because we get to connect without, ha without. I mean, we don't have physically the time to like travel to all these cities and sit with all these people, <laughs> although you do a lot of travel, so maybe you do a little bit of that. <laughs> But your yeah. point's well made. It's it's there are if you're lucky enough to have an organic relationship in person, great. And if you're not, there are ways to do it. And for me, they come from all different walks. It's like I just I really do. I engage my intuition and, you know, my sixth sense on people. And I will literally say, oh, you're going to come with me from now on, please. <laughs> like, like, please get on Voxer so I can ask you questions when I need to. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. I love that. And you might yeah. find someone where you least expect it, right? You might connect with another parent. And that's what I've started to find is as we, as my business grows and as my desire for learning about business grows, it's expanded past my friend circle because not a yes. lot of my friends are entrepreneurs. They don't run their own business. And I love them, but they can't advise me on certain things. And so connecting with a parent who's an entrepreneur at my kid's school who has like a lash business, 
like right. completely not related to what I do. She sells to Walmart. She's like a she's a baller. And I'm like, wow. let's go for lunch. Right. Yeah. Because I love that. It's such a great opportunity to learn from each other. And and mm. I just love it's so nice to talk shop. Let's be honest. We all like to talk shop about whatever we're passionate about. All day, every day, right? Day. That's <laughs> why we have podcasts. <laughs> All right. So Luann, so what, like, what is coming ahead for you? Like, what is, what does 2024 look like? We're in January now. Like what <clears throat> does the year ahead look like for Luann Niagara Inc.? Um, we're leaning in heavily into, uh, Luann University has been available and open for probably four years at this point. Um, I think, I think we started 2019. So this is probably the fifth year, but and 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 my thing is is every year we do innovations to it. Every year we do up levels to it. So whether it's on the back end on documenting the processes and and building them out another level, or um, on the front end in building out the marketing plan for it. But when I think about the spaghetti I threw at the wall on it in 2019 to where it is now, it's a huge machine. You know what I mean from a standpoint of operating it and and doing it. But it's um. You know, we have such fantastic instructors. It really is the the education, the things that you need to know about running a design business that if you went to design school, they didn't teach you. And if you come by your design chops through the school of hard knocks, you certainly didn't get it. And, and it's like, you know, between that and the podcast, it's like the MBA in what you need to run your design business. And so this year, we're doing just one semester as opposed to two semesters. We're um, leaning in and trying to build that up and level that up from a quality standpoint, from a deliverable standpoint, from um, an actionability, what you get from it standpoint. So we'll put this one semester out there and then we're going to dig back in and kind of take it apart and build it back up again. Um, but it's so good where it is. And so I'm very pleased and proud of it and proud of the various industry colleagues that come and spend their time and teach the classes. Um, at the time that we're talking, there's not concrete plans for Luann Live 2024. Um, the cr crazy thing is, is the design industry calendar is brutal. I had decided a year and a half ago that I was going to live in that first week in November that I was like, okay, you know, you go to high point, then you go to, you go to Las Vegas market, then you go to IDS conference, then you go to ASID gathered then and November, you go to Luann live, just like make it easy. Well, I, you know, I've, I do it one year this week. And I looked six months ago at the high point calendar for next October and aren't they pushing it back? to the, the it ends like the 27th of, of October. Yes, and I did like, see that. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me here? Like, just stay in the second week where you belong. <laughs> what is that? What yeah, is that? Just wonder. stay there. Is it so hard? Like the place is closed all year long. It's not like you got to book it. Like, I just don't understand. Someone's probably going on some European vacation. And so <laughs> I mean, know. it's so funny. I've been going to High Point eight years. My birthday is October 16th. I've had every single birthday in High Point for eight years, except for one, which was the year I actually turned 60 and they threw me a big party because they had moved it to that last I week of there. September. I completely yeah. forgot that. I was yeah. there. It was after I'd been on your podcast. I saw you cut the cake. Yeah. It was yeah, right. Cool. So and I, we actually have a picture of us together. Yes. I forgot, right. That. Yeah. And so this is the second time in eight years that they move it to this other week. And so, so then I went to go to the first week of October. And Jenny Cano, who is the executive director for IDS, and her and I are great, are great friends, and I love IDS. And she voxers me, and she's like, uh, Lou, I just signed the contract. You know, like, you, you're not going to want to do that first week of October. And I'm like, you are kidding me. <laughs> like this. So, you know, you have um, the beginning of school. You have lots of holidays in September and October. And so right now... I, as the, when this airs, I may have, ha I may have a decision, but I'm now contemplating parking this thing the four days before high point. Mm. And, and this is either going to the 
the best idea I ever had, or it's going to be the <laughs> worst idea I ever had. <laughs> but honestly, isn't that the fun thing about running your own business is you get uh, to make those decisions. And uh, that was like me with the, with the membership and like closing the Facebook group. I'm like, either this is going to be brilliant yes, <laughs> or yes. everything's going to go upside down. But you know what? Exactly. My God is telling me to go. I, that's I it. That's learned- it. I think you well, can do I'm it still anytime. waiting for my universe message on my gut right now. Yeah. I'm really knee deep into it. And that is another lesson in that. It's like, I have learned if I don't pull the trigger on something that either it's not right yeah, or, and I just have to trust that it's not right because when I know it's right, I'm done. Boom, pull the trigger. Or I don't have all the information to make the decision yet. And so it's so funny because we've had decisions on our team where they're like, uh, you were going to decide this last week. And I'm like, and they're like, you were going to decide this last month. And I'm like, <laughs> right. I'm still waiting for the messages from the universe. You just sit tight. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, that makes me feel better. I do love that. That's I was thinking about that. Like we've been house hunting for like four years, but like air quotes, I'm like I see how, but I can't pull the trigger. And I'm, I'm like, it's obviously not the time. There is. Yeah. You reason- don't really want it. You know, I really don't really want it. want it. Maybe I just want to be a real estate agent. I just like looking at houses. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you just spend your time going to open houses on Sunday for fun. It's don't don't hobby. drag your hard, hobby. husband around. Just just do it for fun. Get it out of your system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's so hard as a designer, right? Because you can envision everything has potential. Uh, I'm like, yeah. but that house had such great potential. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh my, oh God, my gosh, that's funny. so good. Well, I whatever you end up doing, obviously we will be sharing it here. I'm excited to sort of continue to support you and all of your, all of the things, because you are doing a lot of things and it's amazing. Um, and before we sign off today, I would love if you could share one last <clears throat> nugget of wisdom with all of our listeners. So it's funny because that's the one question you give ahead of time, right? And I expected one or the other to be my answer. I expected to either say to you and to your listeners that your talent alone is not going to be the indicator or predictor or the creator of your success. But we talked about that. And then my fallback was cultivate your inside voice. We talked about that. So what I will tell you is what I think the last thing that I'd love to leave you and your audience with Rebecca is that you're not you 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 don't have to do it alone you're probably not going to do it alone you probably can't do it alone and that's not a lack on your part and you know when you look at somebody and you either think their design is great or you think their business sense is great it is built on year after year of intentionally coming back and doing the things and um i don't have a secret weapon or a secret wand i just have a lot of experience and one day you will too and you will be sitting someplace and look back on your life and your business and your career you have to make intentional choices along the way. You have to be willing to listen to your inside voice. You have to be willing to up-level your skills. You have to be willing to say, I have a gap in this area and I'm going to coach with Rebecca to fill the gap. I have a gap in this area. I'm going to take this course to fill that gap. You can't pretend it, but if you do those things every single year, you get better and better and better. And then all of a sudden you're just like, yeah, I got this. This is good. We're all capable. I think if you are capable of dreaming it, you are capable of creating it. Boom. Love that. Love that. Mic Thank drop you. moment. Thank mm. you so much, Luann. It's been such a pleasure having you on the podcast. I hope you'll come back um, and continue to share your wisdom. I know this episode is going to just explode a lot of people's minds <laughs> and just get them ready for the year ahead. Like, I love that this Aww. is happening in January. You know, it's a really great time to just set those intentions for the year, as you said, right? And remember mm. that you don't have to do it alone. No. Uh, no so thank no. you for that. And, and you're capable of doing it. You can, you can do it. I promise you, you can. Yeah, thank you, you so this. much for having me. I don't get to rant like this on the other side of the mic a lot. So I had a lot of fun. I appreciate it. You're very it. welcome. I'm happy to oblige. Uh, for those who don't know where to find and follow you, can you let them know where they can do so? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like if you go to luannigara.com, then you will see the tab for Luann University. You will see the tab for Chairman of the Board. You will see the tab for the two podcasts, all three podcasts, actually. Um, it all lives there at luannigara.com and you can put your way around and find what you're looking for. We'll be back at this, you and I, 
And I can't wait um, to hopefully see you in person at one of the 100 industry events happening this year. <laughs> I know, right? I know. This was fun. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Okay. Can we please just have a moment, a moment to appreciate that conversation? Luann, you are such an inspiration. Thank you so much for coming on this podcast and sharing your wisdom. My biggest takeaway is your whole experience learning about visualization as a child and how that has really informed you as an adult. And in this conversation that we had about trusting your inner voice, I absolutely loved it. And I know that people listening probably did too. Uh, if you guys want to send Luann a note, let her know how much you appreciated her coming and sharing her wisdom on this podcast. You can find her on Instagram. You can, of course, go and find her website, luannigara.com. You can find all of her things there. Um, but absolutely let me know too, like what else do you want me to pick Luann's brain about? Because maybe we can entice her back on the podcast one day in the near future because I just didn't want that conversation to end. Her nugget of wisdom, really, I love that there was multiple nuggets actually. Thank you for that, Luann. <laughs> multiple nuggets. And I'm going through my notes. I took so many notes while we were talking. Um, but just leaving things on that sort of final note, which was, you know, make intentional choices and you don't have to do it alone. I think those are such incredibly powerful words for all of us to remind ourselves. And that doesn't just apply to design business, that applies to life, right? You can ask for help. You can seek out mentors. You can find the answer so you don't have to do it blindly in the dark. And I think today's conversation really highlighted that. And trust your intuition. Trust that inner voice. Find the mentors. Find those people that, whose decisions or at least advice you trust and you know they come from the right place. But know that your inner knowledge and your inner knowing is going to guide you. Um, I just, I hope that that really gets you set off on the right foot as you guys enter into a brand new year. It's an exciting year. I feel as though things are going to change in 2024. I'm excited for all of you to join me inside my designers room community. So if you listen to this episode and you want more, you want to talk about this with other designers, that's exactly what we do inside designers room. We meet twice a month. Um, and we have coaching calls, we have recordings and all the things Maybe we can even get Luann to come join us inside designer's room. <laughs> I can think big, right, Luann? I'm thinking big. Thanks again for taking the time. Guys, if you liked this episode, please go on over to iTunes. Uh, give us a little rating. Give us a little love. And I'll see you all soon. <laughs>